Thanks, Dick, for the introduction. Um, my name is Jun Chen Jiang. This is joint work between CMU and Microsoft. Well, I think everyone in this room has used internet telephony service such as Skype and Hangout before, and I bet you all have experienced bad quality. So that's what this talk is about, improving quality for internet telephony service using predictive relay selection. But let me first quickly walk you through the key points. The talk is about networking perf network performance for internet telephony, such as Skype, and how to improve it. First, we studied 430 million Skype calls and found that about one-fifth of the calls have poor network performance. Okay? And to improve the network performance, we revisit the traditional overlay network approach with an emerging architecture called a managed overlay, and we show the managed overlay could dramatically improve network performance for Skype. The key challenge, though, is to select the optimal relay point for each call. And to select optimal relay points, we present VIA, uh, where the basic idea is to use the performance of history calls to predict the optimal relay selection for future ones. But the key takeaway is going to be twofold. First, managed overlay have tremendous potential in improving now performance for Skype. And the key to unlock this potential is optimal relay selection by data-driven prediction. So that's the overview. Let's be more specific now. Today, internet telephony is everywhere. There are many applications, popular applications focusing on in internet telephony. And take Skype as an example. People talk over two, uh, from over two billion minutes talking on Skype in one day. Okay? And this graph shows the peak number of users concurrent on, video, uh, on Skype. And you can see that this graph grows rapidly over the last decade. So the internet telephony is becoming more and more important. And in the first part of the talk, I'm going to make the case for improving network performance for Skype. So how do we make this case? Well, we use a data set of 430 million Skype calls where we keep the average latency, average packet loss rate, and average jitter for each call. Also, we randomly surveyed a small set of users and got their quality scores. Now, the quality score is in a one to five stars, and below two stars means the quality is bad. Now, our first step is to build a correlation between network performance and core quality. In other words, does network performance matter for core quality? Now, we answer that by focusing on the cause for which we have both network performance and core quality score. The x-axis is the buckets of RTT in millisecond. The y-axis is a fraction of poor quality calls that, uh, whose average RTT is within certain range on the x-axis. Now, we can see a clear trend that higher RTT leads to poorer core quality. Now, to simplify this correlation, we use uh, 320 millisecond as a threshold of good and bad RTT, which is also in line with related work in internet telephony. And similar analysis can be also done on packet loss rate and uh, jitter. And we can see that there's a sim there are similar trends. The worse network performance leads to worse core quality. And also, we use a threshold of 1.2% loss rate and 12 millisecond jitter as threshold to characterize good and bad network performance. So in short, what we see here is Skype core quality is very sensitive to poor network performance. Now, you may ask, how many calls have bad network performance anyway, right? Well, a lot. In a data set, among the calls that takes BGP, direct BGP routing paths, we see that 12% of them have over 320 millisecond RTT, 17% of them have over 1.2% loss rate, 17% of them over 12 millisecond jitter. Overall, what we see is one-fifth of the calls have poor network performance on at least one metric. Well, this is what this talks about, right? So how to improve the network performance for Skype calls? And in other words, alleviate, how to alleviate poor network performance for Skype? Well, the problem is basically essential, essentially the same to maintaining good quality of service over unstable best effort networks. And I bet uh, the solution is almost all obviously obvious to many of you in this room, which is what overlay networks, right? Well, overlay networks is not new. Perhaps everyone in this room has done some research on overlay networks. So what's new here? What's new here is our solution is based on an emerging type of overlay networks called managed overlay. It differs from 
traditional P2P overlays in several key aspects which provide new benefit. First, its nodes are well-managed, well-connected data centers that are widely spread over the world. And it's been uh, deployed by many companies like Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. It is, it is there. And finally, it has single administrative entity which gives it fine-grained control over the system in real time. Now, all of these factors make it now a good time to revisit the overlay network approach. But the question here is, how much can internet telephony, which had traditionally been based, based on P2P overlay networks, benefit from this emergent type of overlay network called managed overlay? Well, the way managed overlay could improve Skype quality is not surprising. Basically, it's selecting the best relay option. Now, here's an example. You have a Skype caller and Skype callee. Well, they have three types of relay options. First, you can go through direct paths using BGP routing, or you can go through one of the relay points, which is one of the data centers of the managed overlay, or you can go through multiple relay points where the middle part is going to be going through managed overlay backbone. By the way, routing through P2P uh, nodes is also an option, but it's not considered in this talk. But the key questions with this, in this context, as in any overlay networks, are first, does picking the best relay option have significant impact on network performance? And two, if so, how to practically pick the best relay option for each, uh, for each call? Now let's focus on the first question for now. Yes, picking the best relay option does have a huge potential benefit on networking performance. And to show this, we consider an article that has performance of all calls in the data set and picks the best relay option for each source destination AS pair. Okay. Uh, p the point of the, so, so, so in other words, this is not a practical system. This is a relay selection oracle with hindsight information. Now, the point of this oracle is to show how many poor performance costs can be, uh, could be alleviated if we always pick the optimal relay option. Okay. Now, uh, th this graph shows the result uh, by different metrics, and we see that in terms of RTP and loss rate, half of, um, managed overlay could potentially reduced more than half of the calls who have bad now performance. Now we also consider a more stringent metric uh, that a call's performance is bad as long as one of the metric is bad. And on the last bar, we see here that even on this stringent, uh, stringent metric, manager overlay can still reduce more than 30% of the calls who is bad performance today. So selecting best uh, relay option in manager overlay could have lead to a great improvement on now performance. So the question is how to practically pick the best relay option for each call. In other words, we need a control system for manager overlay to dynamically pick the best relay option for each call. And our solution for this control system is called VIA. VIA is a logically centralized control plan. It receives performance measurement from existing calls and then use this measurement data to predict the best relay option for future ones, and, and you have uh, this uh, feedback loop. And in, in this work, we focus on the control logic of VIA, and as we'll see soon, this part could be extremely challenging. And to see why it's challenging, let's first consider some strongman solutions. The first strongman is called a prediction-based method, where we basically look back for a long period of time, uh, long period of measurement history, so that we have calls that have, uh, have tried different options, and use their performance to predict the performance of each option in the current cycle. And the problem here is that the prediction could be highly inaccurate. For instance, if you use the data of the last week to predict the performance of the next day, you're gonna have more than 30% error on at least, for example, latency. Now, what causes this uh, is that on the cost granularity of AS and days, the core performance could have huge inherent variance. This is natural, right? And it, this leads us to the second strongman called exploration-based method, where we look at a short time window, say several hours, instead of long history. Now in a short time window, we have several calls uh, between the same AS pair and uh, several relay options here. And without any prior knowledge, what we want to do is to see, uh, to use the calls to explore different relay options and quickly explore the relay options identify the best relay option, and exploit it. Uh, here, 
uh, we assume that each call only uh, uses one relay option, and there's no active measurements involved. Now, for this straw man to work, naturally what, what we want is the number of calls should be much more than the number of relays, relay options, right? But it turns out this is not true for, many, for most AS pairs that we see. What causes this lack of data is not because Skype as a whole doesn't have enough data. It has a huge amount of calls. The reason is that the distribution of calls is, is extremely skewed so that, we don't, uh, so, so that on many AS pairs, we don't have enough calls to explore all the relay options. Okay. So the Strawman solution are either pure prediction-based or exploration-based. Now, in contract, contrast, what VIA does is to combine them in a fortuitous way. Now, let me explain the intuition with this graph. On y-axis, we have the probability that if the best relay option is one of the top k predicted relay option. Okay, that is the actual one, the best one, the actual best one is one of the k relays with the best predicted performance. Now, naturally, if k equals one, y-axis is how likely uh, the best relay according to prediction is the actual best one. Now, like I said, this uh, probability could be low uh, because the prediction error is so high. But if we change our goal from picking the single best relay, picking a single best one, to picking, to picking a set of relays, small set of relays, which include the best one. Can we do a better job? Definitely yes. As you can see here, as k increases, you can see the probability of top k relays to include the best one raises dramatically. Right? In fact, when k equals five, the top k relays will include the actual best one almost all the time. Right? So just to remind you, by the way, this total number of relays is much more than that. So this is amazing. This is, uh, so what this means is it is much easier to predict a small set of relays, re the small set of candidates that include the best one, and this small set of candidates can be explored much faster than exploring all relays. Okay? This is our insight, and this insight inspired a key idea behind VIA, which is called guided exploration. It says even the rough prediction can still identify a top K candidates, which can be explored efficiently. Now, saying in simpler words, it means prediction-based method can be used to narrow the decision space down, and then the exploration-based method can take over and explore it efficiently. Okay. So that's the basic intuition of uh, VIA, and I will explain uh, some of the details now. First, how do we pick the top K candidates? when a prediction, uh, performance prediction is so inaccurate? Well, the idea is to predict not only the mean, but also the confidence interval of the performance, and pick the relay options whose confident in confidence intervals are, much, are strictly better than others. Well, let's consider this example. Uh, here we have an AS pair, we have mo uh, a call history, and we, use, we, can, uh, we have four potential relay options, uh, blue, yellow, green, and red. Okay, and first we get the confidence interval of latency for each option. Now, while it's very hard to tell which of the blue and yellow server have the, is the single best one, you can still clearly see that the yellow and blue servers are, are relays are much more likely than the green and red servers to be the best one. Okay, that's how we pick top K candidates. Having narrowed down the decision space to top K candidates, how do we explore them efficiently? Well, this is essentially a multi arm banded process uh, from machine learning literature. So let me give you a 30 minutes quick overview on multi arm banded problem. Imagine there are multiple slot machines in front of you, okay, and each of them has some distribution of rewards that you don't see. Okay, we don't know the hidden distribution re reward from each slot machine. Each time, you're gonna pull one of the uh, pull one of the slot machine, and then you see a reward drawn from its, dis its distribution. Now the goal of multi arm bandit problem is to maximize the total rewards by balancing exploration and exploitation. So this is, uh, and there's a techni classic technique called uh, upper bound confidence, sorry, upper confidence bound, or UCB1, where the key idea is to maintain the confidence interval of each reward. Okay, the confident interval uh, of the, prof the rewards on each uh, slot machine, and always put the one with the highest upper confidence bound. Okay. 
Now, this problem seems very similar to ours, right? So we have multiple relay options. Instead of slot machines, we have multiple relay options. And when some call uses one of the relay options, uh, we get one sample of the performance, which is the reward. And eventually, what we want is to optimize the observed performance. So naturally, we use UCB1, and we used it with uh, some domain-specific twist, which you can find in the paper. It works pretty well. OK, so let's put them together. The workload, uh, the workflow has two parts. First, VIA periodically takes call history and uses tomography-based algorithm to predict the top K candidates, as we've shown before. Then, in the real time, VIA uses this modified UCB1 algorithm to explore the top K candidates. And at the same time, just to maintain the visibility across other relay options that we haven't tried in the top K candidate, VIA uses a small fraction of calls to explore all options. Now, for the interest of time, there's a bunch of uh, other topics that are not covered in this talk. Uh, for instance, a natural question would be uh, when each managed overlay data set, uh, the data center has a budget on total number of calls that it can relay, how to relay the calls uh, smartly uh, to op uh, under this constraint. And you, can, you are invited to check them out in the, uh, our paper. So finally, evaluation. First, let's see how much managed overlays benefit can be realized by VIA. Okay, that's our first level question. Here, the y-axis is a fraction of bad, perfor bad performance calls who can be improved by, by managed overlay. The higher, the better. The blue bars shows the improvement by the oracle that we, are, uh, that we have seen before, which is the optimal. Now, the red, bar, the red bars shows the improvement by VIA. Now, for instance, you can see here, right, on RTT, Oracle can reduce costs with high RTT by 53%. Uh, at the same time, VIA can reduce it by 45%. So across all these metrics, we see consistently that VIA can realize most of the benefit of managed overlay. Now, just as a reference point, we also compare VIA with the strawman predictive and uh, exploration-based methods, uh, and we find that VIA is much closer to the optimal than the strawman. We have seen the overall improvement. Now let's zoom in uh, and see who is benefiting the most from VIA and who the least. Okay. Now we group the previous result by source ASs and focus on packet loss rate. Now the first example shows an AS who is uh, with managed overlay uh, has huge potential benefit, and most of it can be realized by VIA. However, not all ASs have the same level of improvement. For, for instance, the second example shows an AS where we have very limited room of improvement, so Oracle and VIA is not uh, helping much. And we speculate that this kind of spe uh, substantial difference uh, in benefit is related to the locations of the peering between uh, managed overlay and the other ISPs, and but we cannot confirm that with the data we have. Now, so far, we have shown that VIA can achieve most of managed overlay's benefit, but not always. Now, this last, part, last example shows the limitation of VIA, where the managed overlay's potential is high, but VIA is not taking the full advantage of it. Okay? Now, in this case, it's because the data is too sparse, so sparse that VIA couldn't identify the best relay. And this, in fact, shows the potential for future work. Right? Maybe this problem can be uh, solved by using um, active measurements. You, you, you do ma active measurements to solve this sparse data problem. So to conclude, well, internet telephony is here to stay, but a substantial fraction of calls still suffer from bad network performance. And our goal is to alleviate the bad network performance for Skype calls. Our opportunity here is an emerging type of ma overlay networks called managed overlay, which we showed that it could dramatically improve now performance for Skype. The key challenge, though, is to select the optimal relay option for each call. And our solution is VIA, uh, which achieves most of the benefit of managed overlay. The key idea of VIA is instead of exploring all relay options, 
we should first prune the relay options, pr uh, prune the relay options, and then explore them efficiently. Now, if you forget everything I said in this talk, which many of you will, uh, I really want you. I really like you to take these two takeaways. First, managed overlay have tremendous potential in improving now performance for Skype, and the key to unlock this potential is optimal relay selection by data-driven prediction. Thank you. I'm ready for questions. Um, hi, uh, Pablo from Telefonica. So, so you, you, you mentioned um, the, a fifth of the calls have uh, problems with uh, that, that relate to the network, and that you can solve about half of that. So that would be 10% of the calls. And, but what you don't say is what percentage of the bigger problem you're solving and how big is the problem. So I, I'm assuming that uh, Skype problems uh, occur in different scenarios. Like for instance, you cannot even initiate the call. So Sorry, what was that? You, you cannot even initiate the call. So it's not about okay. jitter or one with this about uh, th th that you cannot even initiate it. Okay. So how big is you say that has a huge potential, but you didn't talk about the big problem. You just said 20% and then 10%. I think, I think when it's a bigger problem, so, so your question is about um, how to put this work into improving Skype quality as a whole, right? Mm -hmm. I think the big problem that you're talking about is basically there are different uh, root causes for quality to be bad in Skype. And I agree with you, this work, this work is purely focusing on the network performance aspect of yeah. Uh, Skype, uh, and uh, I, I don't think I'm in the best position to say well how to how uh, how good quality or, or user experience uh, Skype has, and um, that 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 is another interesting dimension to explore. To say basically, if we improve network performance by let's say 50 percent, um, how how much impact does that have on the uh, Skype quality as a whole? I, I think that's an interesting question, but that's that's not part of this uh, work. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, th th thanks for a really uh, excellent talk. I had a question. Uh, do you have enough data to be able to solve the following question? That is, uh, I have the ability to say locate five new uh, super nodes you know, to, as potential uh, relays. Mm. Do you, if, if you had that, would you be able to pick where to put the five of them to have the best possible impact? Well, I think that's a very, very interesting question. So, so uh, as we all know, this, uh, this Microsoft or Google, uh, they have managed overlay and they keep expanding them, right? So you have new nodes coming in, new data center locations that can be used for uh, super node. That's a really realistic question, but um, in this work, I don't think the technique we have here is suitable for that because we need to have some information, performance information on those nodes to as a bootstrap, right? So, uh, but, but, but I think that uh, th there's, a th there are, uh, th there's a potential to do that. The, thing, the, uh, the reason is that uh, with existing data, you can still infer kind of uh, where, where the best location you should put your super node to, right? So for example, if you find that uh, even with, exist, uh, with the existing managed overlay, this AS doesn't have enough, uh, the, so, so, couldn't, so the existing managed overlay couldn't improve the performance of this AS, then maybe the next move is to put some uh, super node to directly peering with that AS uh, to avoid for example, their, their poor peer relationship with other ISPs. I, I think th there's a way to infer that. Uh, right, yeah, I think that you may have enough data to actually solve that, which is actually very interesting to, to, to look at. Yeah. yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Mark Berman with BBN. Uh, very interesting talk. I have a question that's sort of related to Keshev's, uh, which is, did you look at the performance of your algorithm in different managed overlay configurations, and do you have a sense for how much the specific nature or the specific design of the managed overlay might affect the performance of your algorithm? Uh, yeah, I think that's an interesting question. Thank you. But um, can, can you give an example, uh, like what are the different uh, configurations you would imagine in for managed overlay? Oh, I think I would start with, with say, the, the sheer size of the managed overlay. You know, how many relay options do you have? How likely are uh, uh, are relays to be close to 
uh, either you know physically or topologically, your your customers, um, you know, those sorts of things. Uh, yeah, I think that's a very generic question. Um, there, there, are there are many different configurations that might affect the performance of managed overlay or the performance of via on top of managed overlay. I, I agree with that. And uh, um, I, I don't think that our work uh, so far has looked at that problem thoroughly. But what we did uh, look into is if you have uh, some budget on the relay, uh, on the managed overlay um, capacity, so for example, each uh, manage over overlay node, each data center has some cap on top um, the maximum cost we that can they, they can support to relay. Uh, then if you can ch if you change that cap, you can see that the manage overlay is not uh, so so via should be changed a little bit to cope with that. And uh, this is th th there's a minor twist in via that, that you can do to uh, better um, um, adapt to the different budget you have on the manage overlay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's let's thank Jun Chen for an excellent talk. Thank you. Thank you.